And welcome, listeners, to this episode with Mark Bishop. My special guest is Phaedra Buenadiris. She's IBM Consulting's global leader, forget this, trustworthy AI. Can AI be trustworthy, I wonder? Well, generative artificial intelligence, AI, is fundamentally changing the way business operates. About 50% of CEOs say they're already integrating generative AI into their products and services. That's a lot. The business leaders, they're excited about the potential of AI, yet they are still concerned about potential risks like AI hallucinations, bias, data security issues. And additionally, they are closely monitoring the rapidly evolving regulatory landscape, calling on organizations to ensure their AI is utilized safely, transparently, and of course, ethically. So Phaedra Bonadiris is IBM's consulting global leader for trustworthy AI. Welcome, Phaedra. Oh, thank you for having me, Mark. Share with us, if you would, please, the key challenges that you're hearing from global businesses and governments regarding AI governance and uh, the ethics. Well, what we're ultimately trying to do, those of us who are working in risk and compliance, is we're trying to have our human values be reflected in the technologies that we're building, tech like AI, right? We expect, we as consumers expect that technologies like AI will not lie to us will not discriminate, will be safe for us and for our kids to use. But this isn't strictly a technical challenge at all. It is a socio-technical challenge, which means you have to have a really holistic approach with respect to how you're going to solve that problem. Anytime you you think of the word socio-technical, you've got to be thinking about people, process, tools, people meaning what is the right organizational culture that is required to create AI responsibly? What are the right AI governance processes and the right tools and AI engineering frameworks in order to make sure models are behaving the way you intend them to behave? Mm. Well, businesses, you know, they need to be confident that the AI that they're using uh, for mission critical decisions and outputs is trustworthy and reliable. From what I can understand, Phaedra, uh, governing large language models, the LLMs, it is complex. Uh, organizations need to proactively detect and mitigate risk associated with AI to avoid reputational damage. Audits and fines, uh, litigation add to that. Consumers will be directly impacted by the decisions that businesses make in that particular moment, correct? Right, exactly. And indeed, you could have something be lawful but awful. Right. So it it definitely does expand beyond regulatory compliance to include things like ethics and making sure, indeed, these models are reflecting the values of your organization. It is really, really important work. And those that are accountable for that work were accountable for safe and responsible outputs from their models. Not only do they have to have enough power in an organization to do that work, but they have to have a funded mandate and work across all these different stakeholders in order to put the appropriate safeguard rails in place. But why is it important that AI is aligned to human values? I mean, what are the potential implications, risks, if you like, if it's not? Well, not just risks of things being inaccurate, right, where you're you're expecting it to give you an accurate output and instead it just makes something up, uh, but also true output outputs that could be truly unfair or biased or lacking in the historical context or the meaning of the prompt itself. Like large language models in particular, what they're really great at, Mark, is they're great at predicting the next syntactically correct word in a sentence, but they fundamentally don't understand the context or the meaning of those words. So data plus context gives you information. Data plus context plus understanding the relationships brings you knowledge. 
So making sure you've got that kind of information and you're curating that responsibly in order to have the kinds of outputs that people can trust is really, really important. And I haven't even touched on cybersecurity concerns yet, which again is why you need to have a multi-stakeholder approach in order to, to build these models responsibly. Can you discuss the role of education and training then in promoting responsible AI practices like uh, what are some of the skills, for instance, and knowledge that are needed to develop and deploy AI responsibly? Well, since it is not strictly a technical challenge with a technical solution, but one that is socio-technical, we really need to change how we're rolling out AI literacy programs today, not just within corporations and organizations, not just in higher ed institutions, but indeed we need to introduce the subject earlier and earlier on in people's academic careers. And I would opine, because this work needs to be multidisciplinary, we need to be teaching it not just in computer science class, but in social studies class. Because the hard part of developing these AI models in a way that reflects the needs of the very diverse communities that we need to serve is we need people trained to ask the questions, what is the kind of relationship that we want to have with AI? How can we measure that this is actually augmenting human intelligence? How do we know that people are empowered? Has the data that has been chosen, do we understand its context according to domain experts? Is it representative? Is it gathered with consent? These aren't strictly technical questions, Mark. Mm-hmm. Well, I'll know when I can uh, ask for a lovely hot cup of coffee in the morning and I don't have to get out of bed to get it. Ah, I love it. <laughs> That's I love the AI it. One. What can businesses do to foster consumer trust in AI? I mean, there's a lot of stuff out there at the moment, you know. Well, a few things. First of all is making sure that you've got people who are accountable, who have the power and the funded mandate to do all of that work that I just described, all of that work around governance and the safeguard rails. The next is to to be really deliberative about having the, the human in the center, thinking through, again, what are the human values we want to see represented in these AI models? And then what are the functional and non-functional requirements to make those principles come to life. For example, at IBM, uh, we stated the principles we want to see reflected in AI are fairness and explainability, robustness against adversaries, transparency, data, privacy. But we have clients, Mark, who've come up with totally new ones. Like we have a client in California. They're developing AI models that kids will use. And one of the human values they want to see reflected in those AI models is kindness. So what does it mean in terms of feature and function for an AI model to reflect the worldview or the human value of kindness? And then the Mm -hmm. last tenet, the last tenet I want your listeners to to remember is especially for high risk use cases to show your work. Why did your model say what it just said? What data did it use in order to generate that output? Right, waving hands around and saying, "Oh, it's a black box. It's too complicated for you." Is not good enough in order to earn people's trust. Oh my God! Listen, folks, go to ibm.com forward slash consulting forward slash AI dash governance. Okay, now that's the uh, that's the actual website that you'll be able to get all the information. We'll read a hell of a lot more anyway to try to understand. And uh, thank you so much, Pedro, because. Uh, uh, Fedra Bonaduris is the IBM Consulting Global's leader for trustworthy AI. And the reality is uh, it's here, and we appreciate what you have shared with us. And uh, But that's where they've got to go, to that website. And uh, I think you'll learn a lot more. Thanks again, Fedra. My pleasure, Mark. Thanks for having me.